what's up everybody so in today's video we will be continuing the discussion of longest path problem and in fact i have already discussed the solution of this problem and it was completely correct but we will get in time dot error because our solution was having bad time complexity so in this video what we are going to be doing is optimizing the solution of this problem so for those who haven't watched my previous video i will request you to please check that video out so that you have the basic understanding of how to approach this problem and i'll also request you guys to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon so with that being said let's try to optimize the solution so whatever solution which i have discussed earlier was or was recursive solution and in that we were running the dfs on all the vertices and what DFS of I was doing, it was finding the longest path for that particular voltage I. And when we were running the DFS for all the voltages, we were getting the longest path for all the voltages. And then we were finding the overall longest path. And the time complexity was n square. And that was the reason it was not working. So now we'll use the new programming to optimize the solution. So we'll use the same solution but we'll do something which will help us optimize in the solution. So let's say if we call DFS of 1, what it was doing, it was calling the DFS to all the neighboring voltages of 1, that is DFS of 2, then DFS of 4 and DFS of 3. And DFS of 1 was giving us the longest path for DFS of 1. And similarly, DFS of 2 was given the longest path for DFS of 2 and so on. So if you see for i is equal to 1, we were calling the DFS on all the neighbors in vertices. And similarly for i is equal to 2, again we were calling the DFS on 2 and then on 4. But um, what can we do here is we can instead of calling the DFS of 2 and 4 again, we could have just stored the result of DFS of 2 and 4 so that we don't have to do the work again. So that's what we'll do here. So we'll have a DP uh, array of n size and n here represents the number of vertices. And initially it will be initialized to minus 1. And what we are going to be doing is we will be finding the DFS of each voltage and then is stored in, in the uh, DP array. So let's see the steps. So we'll call DFS i and then we'll check if DFS of i is stored in DP of i. So if it's is stored, then we re return the result. So if it's not stored, then we'll find the result and then it stored the result in DP of i and then return the final answer. So this way we don't have to do the work again and again. And I think this solution will work fine. So let me just pull out the custom test and then we can just uh, improve the solution. So the solution is fine. Now we'll have a DP array. So DP of array will be of n size and it will have minus one as a value initially. Now what we are going to be doing, we will check if we have the answer for DFS of i, that is if DFS of i is not equal to minus 1, then that, that means that we have the answer for DFS of i, then we will simply return the answer. And if we don't have the answer, then what we are going to be doing, we will just simply find the answer and store it into dfs of i and then we return the answer so this should work and let me just try to run the solution again for this particular sample case and see whether we are getting some answer yeah we are getting three and let me see which is this sample input this is the third sample input and the answer is 3 now let me just copy the solution and try to run it for all the test cases so now we are not 
call in the efforts of i for all the world tests we will we are just checking whether we have the answer for that particular world, world test so if we have we don't have to go on computing the result and if we don't have the result we just do the work and find the dfs of i so now i think our solution should work let's see so if you see the answer is getting accepted so that's all from my side i'll see you in the next video thanks everyone